Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some which I grew up with, and some which are new to me. Today's game is Pole Position, which was originally released to arcades by Namco in 1982, and is considered to be one of the most important and influential games of the early 80s, particularly in the racing game genre. The Atari 8-bit version we're going to be looking at today uh, originally showed its face in 1983. Um, exactly who's responsible for its development is a bit hard to come by because, as was normal for the Atari of the period, they didn't actually credit anyone for it. So um, I couldn't find the information as to who actually put this port together, but I'm sure someone out there knows. So if you do happen to know, do please let me know in the comments. So pole position on the Atari 8-bit has had an array of hacks and alternative versions uh, over the years, including ones with more tracks. And there was even a track editor released as public domain in 1984 as well. So it's always been a very popular game on the platform. Always been a very popular game full stop really, because it's one of the defining arcade racing games uh, of the sort of old school vanishing point mold. It's also one of the few Atari 8-bit games that actually have an original boxed copy of as well. This is the American version, I believe, which uh, my brother asked my parents to track down at great expense during one of their trips to America. So um, this sort of front here is fairly standard for the period. Got uh, a bit of blurb down the side there. And then on the back, we have the common practice of the period of uh, having just a sort of rough approximation of what the game looks like, drawn with lovely smooth artwork rather than the actual screenshot. And uh, yeah, so the blurb reads, you don't just play pole position, you feel it. Now, the thrill of the arcade game at home. First, the qualifying run. You and your turbocharged Formula One racer capture the pole position, the spot every driver, every driver dreams of, even. The other racers line up, engines roar, and you're off. Hanging tight to the curves, weaving in and out of the pack, you jockey for the lead. Then you break away with steel determination to be first in the run for the checkered flag. So if you've not seen one of these cases before, um, they are an enormous waste of space because uh, the actual game, I can uh, just pop it out, comes on this teeny tiny cartridge, which uh, as you can see, doesn't really need a box that big. And in fact, in this case, it doesn't even need a box that big for the manual because the manual is that small. <laughs> Let's just see if there's anything interesting in here. Oh, it's, um, it's a multilingual manual as well. So we've got uh, English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish, I believe. So I don't think it really tells us anything that we haven't known. Oh, some helpful hints. Make a fast start. In the qualifying lap, be prepared to take off as soon as your race car appears on the screen. In the real race, be ready to take off as soon as the green starting light flashes. Now it's very difficult not to do this in pole position because you accelerate automatically uh, because the original arcade version had pedals, uh, whereas the Atari 8-bit only has a single button joystick. So uh, what happens in this game is that you accelerate automatically, use up and down on the joystick to change gear and press the fire button to brake. So there, there is no way of not getting a fast start. So that's a very helpful hint. I guess it's a helpful hint for the arcade version, if nothing else. Anyway, enough rummaging around in old boxes and uh, reminiscing about the past. Let's go play Pole Position. Okay, here we are with Pole Position for the Atari 8-bit. Uh, this is very much a game that I grew up with and that our whole family used to enjoy playing. Uh, and as I said, there have been quite a few versions of this over the years. Mostly sort of hacks and homebrew variations and attempts to improve on the graphics and make track editors and all that sort of thing. Um, but this is the original version, the one that I have the cartridge for. So, before we kick off, let's just see what our various options are. So hitting the select button, you see you can adjust the number of laps of the race. Let's set that to its default of four. Then you can press option to switch between the practice run, the Malibu Grand Prix, Namco Speedway, and the Atari Grand Prix. And that's basically your difficulty level. So on the practice run, you have no other cars to worry about, but it's also not. A proper race as such um, and then the other three are difficulty levels that determine how many obstacles are in your way so that determines the frequency of trackside obstacles and also how frequently you'll come across other cars as well it does not change the track um, looking back on some reviews of this game from when it first came out there was at least one review who got terribly angry uh, that these settings did not uh, give you a different track but no it's, it's always the same track it's always the track that you play in the arcade version um it, it, it's just how difficult the experience is so let's hit start and kick off and we begin with the qualifying lap 
Prepare to qualify. Yeah, that's not in this version, unfortunately. No digitized speech, because people hadn't quite figured that out on Atari 8 bits at this point. They had figured out some solid racing gameplay, though. And so if you've not come across Pole Position before, this was basically the original Vanishing Point racer. I don't think it was necessarily the absolute first, uh, but it was definitely the one that sort of popularised the concept and defined a lot of the things that became convention in this genre going onwards. So you've got the distinct behind-the-car perspective. You've got other cars getting in your way. You've got obstacles down the track side um, that are hazardous to your health. We have awkward overtaking situation, and we have pole position based iconic feature, which is exploding into a fiery ball of death anytime you clip anything, even slightly. And of course, on top of all that, we have the ever ticking clock in the top middle of the screen. So, this is a time limited game. So, not only does that provide some challenge to the gameplay, um, it was also a way of limiting how long people would spend on the arcade machine as well. So, um, as you probably know, arcade machines are all about getting that turnover of punters and getting them to keep putting the coins in the slots. And our time limit was a simple, easy way to incorporate that into the mix. So, as far as gameplay goes, um, your car accelerates automatically. And the reason for this is because we only have a single button on our Atari joystick and we have a variety of things that the controller needs to do so as well as steering left and right we need to be able to accelerate and brake and we need to be able to change between low and high gear so yeah this game also introduced the concept of the of the uh, two different gears also seen in much later vanishing point races like outrun oh dear So in the case of this game, what we have is automatic acceleration, braking on the fire button, um, and shifting gears pushing up or down on the joystick. If you're used to slightly more recent racing games or racing games on consoles, it might take a little bit of getting used to, because it's a slightly different arrangement of controls that you might be accustomed to, but it works well. It works well for this game. It's easy to understand. You can do everything without needing to take your hands off the controller. And you always feel like you're in complete control of what's going on. Even when things get a little bit hectic and chaotic, as they often do in pole position. But yeah, as you can probably see, there's certain aspects of the experience that aren't quite perfect. Like, for example, look at the speed the road is going. No! And then compare that to the speed of the trackside objects, and you'll see that they hadn't quite nailed the simulation of speed. Because the road is being handled through sort of cycling colours, whereas the trackside objects in the other cars are basically big chunks of graphics that are being thrown around. I don't think they're actually sprites in this case. Simply because there's too much going on here for the Atari's four hardware sprites to handle. And also they don't actually move around the screen that much. So they're mostly um, sort of large lumps of graphics that are probably being sort of copied and moved around all over the place. I don't know the specifics of it, but there we go. Anyway, we failed to complete the Malibu Grand Prix Labs 4, so let's have another go at that. And I will try not to crash on that super tight corner this time. That is the one the one that you have to watch out for on this one. In the arcade version, you could easily spot that corner because just before it, you had a billboard that was promoting the game Centipede. Um, but you can't do that in this version. There is a red billboard partway round it. Um, but that doesn't really help if you... haven't started steering early enough. 
So if you're less familiar with the the vanishing point racer subgenre, you might notice that this is not a true simulation of 3D. What we've got is these converging lines on the screen simulating the effect of 3D. And then your movement, your contribution to this is actually you're just moving from side to side rather than actually turning. And what happens when you get on a corner is that you're gradually pushed towards the outside of the corner. And thus you have to stay around the corner to compensate for that. So it's a system that remained place in place um, for quite a long time, in fact. And in, indeed, in more recent years, we've started to see more and more games um, deliberately returning to this style of racing. Because it's got a very distinct feel to 3D racers. As in polygonal 3D racers. So although it's less realistic than... Um, sort of a 3D racer, even if it's like an arcade 3D racer like Ridge Racer or something like that. Um, this method of control is probably a lot more accessible to a lot of people. It's easy to understand. You just push left and right. You don't have to worry about sort of facing the right direction because you're, you're always going down that track. All you need to control is make sure that you don't go off the track and don't hit any obstacles. Which is easier said than done sometimes. I guess in some ways you can kind of liken it to um, to slot car racing in some ways. Although in slot car racing you don't have that much control over your sort of lateral position on the track. But you do have to bear in mind things like your speed and your relative position to other competitors and any obstacles that might be in the way and trackside features and that sort of thing. So I guess you could look at it that way. Either way, it's certainly quite a distinct feeling to uh, the racing games that we have today, particularly the more simulation style ones. But this is a flat out arcade experience. In which your aim is not necessarily to win the race in terms of position. You'll notice that it's not actually keeping track of your position anywhere. Um, but instead to attain the highest score. And you do that by surviving longer without running out of time. By passing other cars. And if you're really lucky and or skilled. By completing the race and getting a time bonus. For the amount of time you have remaining. So yeah, although we've got both a countdown timer and a lap timer in the corner. Ooh, it's getting busy, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a game about high scores rather than best times. Oh, God, it's getting tight now. I feel like the, the difficulty is ramping up slightly with every lap. I'll be honest, I've never been especially good at this game, and cer I certainly wasn't as a kid. I d it's one of those games that I used to sort of just enjoy the experience of, and I didn't get too frustrated with the fact that I wasn't very good at it because... Like the box says, you don't just play pole position, you feel it. And it was a game that was just fun to play, even if you weren't good at it, because you got the thrill of driving at high speed, of slamming yourself around these corners, of frequently bursting into fireballs when you clip something the wrong way, and of wrecking up those high scores. We're on the final lap, and we've actually got more time than we started with, so that is promising, as long as the road ahead doesn't get too busy. So yeah, it's definitely getting a bit tight around here, having to weave our way in and out of all these friends here. There's a tight one coming up. Need to slow down. One thing I've really learned to appreciate about this game since I played it as a kid is the actual necessity for braking. Because it's very easy to assume in these vanishing point races that it's all about just slamming your accelerator down as hard as you can and then never letting go for the entire lap. 
when more often than not, they're not about that at all. Okay, sometimes you don't necessarily need to hit the brake, but you certainly do need to slow down at times. And we've done it! So we get a bonus of 50 points for every car that we pass as well. So that contributes to our final score. So obviously that means if you do the um, the races with more laps, you will get a higher score. Obviously, because you're driving further as well, but you also get a higher passing bonus. And then we get 200 points per second left on the clock. And then you get your total time at the end as well. So 219.68 seconds. I don't know if that's good. It feels good. I don't normally finish a race in this, I'll be honest. But that was the most easy difficulty level. Let's bump it up to the hardest and just compare. Now you notice at the top of the screen, the high score is only stored for the current mode that you're doing. And if you switch out that mode, you actually lose your high score. So there's no means of saving high scores in this. So if you want to uh, sort of compete with your friends or something, better make sure you write them down. All right, Atari Grand Prix is the hardest mode. Let's give this a go. I don't think it necessarily makes the qualifying any harder. Uh, although, like I say, it does affect the amount of roadside obstacles as well as cars that you come across. So the qualifying shouldn't be too much more difficult as long as we um, stay on the road. Oh, there are cars in qualifying as well. Uh, so this might be a bit harder. We'll see. We'll just see about that. So I guess if there are more cars, that means that if you play on the harder difficulty levels, uh, you will score more points as well, because there's more cars to go past. Slow down. See, there's the red billboard that's on that corner. But because that's sort of halfway round the corner, it's not a brilliant cue to um, start braking or, or turning sharply or anything like that. It's, it's just something that you've got to learn, really. And learning the track is a lot easier to do in a game where there's only one course. Oh. Nicely done. Pole position. Wow. So I actually got uh, the top spot on the hardest difficulty level. Something tells me things are about to go horribly wrong, though. And we get a big score by this for being in pole position as well. So that's nice. And here we go. So pole position was my first encounter with motorsport as a child. Um, as such, I was very disappointed when I watched my first Formula One race on television and the lights at the start didn't go boop, 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 boop. As that was always a very iconic sound, not just of pole position, but of racing games in general. So many racing games use that sort of convention for the starting lights. I don't really know why. It just sort of happened. But I like it. <laughs> if I remember correctly, I think Formula 1 does have a sort of buzzer that sounds when the lights first come on. But from that point on, it's up to the drivers to just keep an eye on them and actually watch them. Rather than listening to audible cues. Now, interesting thing I'm spotting about this, I've never really sort of looked at it and analysed it in great detail, but if you look at the other cars, they are actually not only sort of moving down the track, they are changing lane and they are trying to overtake each other and all sorts of things like that. That's really interesting to see, actually, because it's, it's easy to assume in a game this early that the other cars would just be static obstacles to get in your way, but no, they're actually moving around and doing stuff. Which is cool. They never actively block you. Which is good, because if they slammed into the side of you while you were overtaking them, that would be incredibly irritating. With how much time a crash wastes in this game. That would be awful. But they do seem to deliberately get themselves into arrangements where it's quite difficult to sneak past them, like that there. Oh dear. First crash of the race. Not doing too badly, though. 
I am actually pretty pleased with my performance today. Like I say, I've never been super good at this game. But I think that's mostly because I, I haven't spent a huge amount of time with it as an adult. And so a lot of my memories of this game are based on how I used to play it as a kid. Like I said, with, without breaking, without really sort of having a full understanding of everything you need to bear in mind while you're... No, no! While you're playing it. And with crashing a lot, of course. But yeah, I, I'm enjoying this. I mean, obviously it's very limited compared to modern racing games. Even more recent, slightly more recent Vanishing Point races like Outrun and so on. With with just the one track, the, the long-term appeal of this is a little bit limited. But it's still an excellent conversion of a classic arcade game. Truly timeless and such, such an important game. Both for arcade games in general and for a complete genre of games. So for racing games in general. This is such an important game. Oh, it's getting busy. Oh, God. Oh, God. Get out of the way. Oh, no. I'm not super confident. We've got a minute left, though. I'm going to just try not to mess up too much. We should be fine. Bit of delicate application of the brakes. Bit of uh, substantial application of the brakes on this corner. Oh, that was close. And hold tight until the end. Oh god, you're going slowly. Ah! Thread the needle, thread the needle. Come on, through the middle, through the middle. Ooh. Oh, I think we, we I think we've got it. Ah, I've done it. I finished the hardest difficulty level. I've beaten pole position. Well, I mean, I could go back and play for a higher score because uh, 13 seconds left on the clock. I could have a lot more than that. And at 200 points per second left on the clock, you can get quite a substantial bonus from the time you have remaining yeah i think my final score there was actually less than i had um on the easy mode so not bad at all though not bad at all anyway that is pole position i'll leave that there for now uh i guess you've seen me race around that same track twice now four times if you count the qualifying laps but yeah pole position still well worth well worth taking out for a spin as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, MoeGamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese inspired games from yesterday and today, and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.